had to worship us this morning. Uh, again, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And so we're going to very quickly uh, go through our call to worship. Uh, we apologize for the technical difficulty, but we're back on live, back now with sound. Amen. Amen. So let's go to our amen. My soul waits, 
and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. And it is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. We praise God for the 130th Psalm, verses 1 through 8. Let us now hear a New Testament scripture from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and said, and, and when he saw him, fell on his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and alive. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Yeah. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately, aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Well, he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. He then laughed at them. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. Yeah. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that, they, that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Well, amen. We give God praise this morning again for reminding God's healing power. Amen? Amen. 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 We now uh, prepare our hearts and minds for our purpose of the day. Law. From all that moves from the sky, we praise God.
was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this shall come the judge of quick man and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Listen, we praise God this morning for the chance uh, to hear from our choir. Prepare your hearts and minds for a wonderful selection of our lead shout.
God for that reminder. Indeed, that God has brought us a mighty long way. Amen? Amen. God has been faithful to us always. God has blessed us indeed. Uh, our scripture text this morning comes from the book of Lamentations. Uh, chapter 3, verses 21 through 33. Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 21 through 33. Let us hear the word of the Lord. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Well, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. It is good for one to bear the yoke in the youth, yeah. to sit alone in silence yeah. when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust that it may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the sinner and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever, although he causes grief. He will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Yeah. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, our creator and our sustainer, we thank you, God, for the chance to gather this day. We thank you, God, for your presence in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the chance to come into worship this morning, God, and to lift your name high, that we may receive, God, a word from you. Send now, Lord, your word, that our lives may be transformed and changed. This is God's our prayer of your Son, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. For just a few moments, I want to look at this third chapter of Lamentation, verses 21 through 33 and focus on this thing for today. Maintaining a spirit of expectation. Maintaining mm -hmm. a spirit of expectation. Well, As children of God, you and I should always be accept, expecting something good mm -hmm. from God. Uh, we know that this world does not owe us anything. Mm -hmm. But God is so good that oftentimes his goodness is the only thing that gives us hope for a good day. Well, we recognize that there will be moments in each of our lives when we face difficulty and have obstacles overcome, but we still should expect something good, not from the world, but from God. Yeah. The reason we should expect something good from God is not dependent upon what we have done, right. but rather who God is and who we are in relation to God. Right. If we are to live the kind of life that God has created us to be, we have to maintain a spirit of expectation. Our Sunday school lesson yesterday focused on overcoming doubt. We talked about Jesus and the disciples and Peter expecting to be able to be called out of the water if Jesus called him out. He was expecting something good from God. It creates in us an expectation of something good. Jeremiah gives us three ways to maintain a spirit of expectation. The first way is this. Look for new mercy every morning. Verses 22 and 23 simply say that your mercies, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 22 says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. 
His mercies never come to an end. One of the easiest ways that we can look for new mercy in the morning is we wake up. Amen. That's the easiest thing to do. Amen. When you wake up, you should immediately say, the fact that my eyes have seen a new day, there's a chance for more mercy in my life. The reason we look for new mercy is because it sets the tone for our day. Jeremiah recognized the importance of looking for new mercy because of the issues he faced in his life. Jeremiah was trying to live a life that would be pleasing to God, and in the process of living this life, he was being tested and oftentimes found himself ready to give up. There were people causing problems in his life, and he wanted to give up. There were times when he wanted, was there any benefit to doing what was right? And he wanted to give up. You may have been there. I've been there. When you wonder why do I keep doing what is right when everybody who's doing wrong seems to prosper? It makes you want to give up on doing right. Jeremiah kept wondering these things. There were goals he was trying to reach. There were expectations he had for his life. He looked at his life and he wasn't where he wanted to be. And he wanted to give up. He didn't know how he wasn't where he was supposed to be. He was overcoming the problems that he was going through. But the Bible says that he remembered that despite all the problems he was having, he was still overcoming those problems. And he didn't know how. But then, Jeremiah said this, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, and his birth is new every morning. Jeremiah realized that the reason he was still able to overcome challenges was because of God's steadfast love. Jeremiah realized that God gave him new mercy for the new issues he would always face. God has specifically designed each mercy for each problem. Jeremiah realized that God was not giving old mercy, but God was new mercy. Then he began to rejoice because he was happy that God did not give him left over mercy, but rather God freshly baked mercy for that day. God freshly made mercy for that day. God freshly created mercy for that day. God wasn't giving Jeremiah left over mercy from last week. He wasn't giving him left over mercy from last night. But God had new mercy for Jeremiah every morning. And the same thing is for you and I. We had new mercy this morning. Today's mercy wasn't yesterday's mercy. This morning's mercy wasn't last week's mercy. This morning's mercy was for today. Whatever problem you're going to face today, God has new mercy for that day. Look what Jeremiah says. Verse 22, he declared that for you and I, the steadfast love of God never ceases. In other words, God's love doesn't stop even when we want to give up. You may have had a day when you have just come to your wit's end. You tried everything, you tried to figure out how to solve the problem, and you have just resolved that you cannot solve it, but God's love keeps going. Yeah, yeah. You have found yourself unable to solve the problem, but God's love keeps going. We are here today because some point in our lives, when we want to give up, God said, you may want to give up, but I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Listen to this. After Peter messed up, he denied Jesus three times. But what does God do? The love of God didn't give up on him. The love of God grabbed Peter after the resurrection and said, Peter, I still want you to work in my kingdom. When Samson messed up and he abused his strength, God did not give up on him. God's love kept giving him another chance. When Ruth thought her life was over and had no more meaning, God's love was there to remind her that even though she had a horrible situation, she still had value and she still had work. In other words, God's work, God's love in each of our lives keeps energizing us. It keeps flowing. It keeps reminding us of God's love in our lives. And because of that, Jeremiah says, we should expect something good from God. Because God's love doesn't end. The second point he says is this. Remember your 
inheritance. Mm -hmm. Well, remember mm -hmm. your inheritance. Verse 24 says this, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will hope in him. Jeremiah realized that he was special because God was his inheritance. We all know what inheritance is. We know how it works. It allows us to get something that was previously not ours. Uh, you inherit something that wasn't yours. Your uncle had a car. He leaves it to you. It wasn't yours. It becomes yours. Your auntie had a house. Your mother had a house. They leave it to you. You have a suit. You inherit. You have some stock. You inherit. Inheritance is something that was not yours, but now is yours. Uh, what they leave to us didn't belong to the one who gets it, even though we may have had use of it. But for Jeremiah, there's a realization that God is his inheritance. Notice what he said. The Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. What Jeremiah understood was that he didn't earn, don't miss this, Jeremiah did not earn what he was about to get. Don't miss that. Jeremiah didn't do anything to get what he was about to get. He didn't work for what he was about to get. He wasn't good enough for what he was about to get. He didn't treat folks nice enough for what he was about to get. Jeremiah got his inheritance because God wanted him to have it. Jeremiah got the inheritance because God was merciful. Jeremiah got the inheritance because God was having grace shown his way. We have the inheritance because God loves us. We have this inheritance because God has mercy upon us. And here's the kicker. If the inheritance is not something, but somebody. Yeah. Well, well, his, his inheritance is God. And that's hard for us to understand because we always think of an inheritance as something and not someone. We have to understand what the text is telling us. God knew that just like us, Jeremiah would need something in his life to help him in biblical times. Mm -hmm. well, God said, I can give you something. That's what inheritance is. And inheritance helps you because somebody left you something they knew you would need. So God says to Jeremiah, I know you need me in difficult times. God knew that Jeremiah, just like us, had no way of knowing everything that he would need in his life. God knew that Jeremiah, just like us, needed something to look forward to so he could keep doing what was right. So God said, I'm going to give you me. I'm going to give you me. I'm going to give all of me to you. Now let's be clear about something, Jeremiah. You didn't earn me. You didn't work for me. You didn't ask for me. But I know you need me. So I'm going to give you me. And God says that to all of us. I'm giving you my best so you can be your best. That doesn't mean that God is out of everything. It doesn't mean that God will just be sent off to do things that we don't want. God says, no, that's not my job. My job is to make you better. I'm giving you myself so you can be better than you are now. But so when God is our inheritance, we engage with him in a manner that he engaged with Adam and Eve before sin came into the picture. In other words, when we have God as our inheritance, God walks with us. God talks with us. And God makes us his own. Don't miss this now. When God is our inheritance, we can engage in conversation with God as we would if we could see him. Here's the key, don't miss this. God is our inheritance to me. God is here right now. For those watching from home, God is next to you right now. God is here and God is there. So he's right here and he's right there. Take the time right now to go ahead and talk to God. Take the time now. Go ahead and thank 
while I'm waiting on God for my deliverance, I can learn to be more kind. While I'm waiting on God, I can learn to be more helpful to you. While I'm waiting on God, I can learn to spread more joy. While I'm waiting on God, I can learn to quiet help you grow. While I'm waiting on God, I can learn to busy myself with doing some work. Oh, what would it look like while we're waiting on God if we learn to busy ourselves with building God's kingdom? What would it look like if while we're waiting on God, I can learn to smile more? I can learn to treat people better? What would it look like if while I'm waiting on God, I can learn to praise God more in the meantime? I can learn to praise God for my blessings. If I learn to praise God while I'm waiting, I learn to get my spirit excited. I learn to maintain a spirit of expectation so that when I do receive it, I can really enjoy it. So that when I do need it, I can really praise God. But in the meantime, I can praise God. In the meantime, I can improve myself. And so while I'm waiting on God, I can be quiet. And do this. Jeremiah learned something about waiting on God. He learned that God is good to those who wait. We also learned that God has compassion on us. And that maybe somebody out there today who you've been waiting for God to move in a certain area. And you've been expecting something good from God. And maybe it just hadn't gotten to it yet. Let me encourage you, don't give up. Let me encourage you, keep on doing what you've been doing. <clears throat> Let me encourage you, don't go back to how you were, but keep on doing the right thing. Keep on living for the Lord will guarantee you, you will be better for it. You will grow from it, and you will see yourself be better. But more than that, you will demonstrate to somebody else what it looks like to wait patiently on the Lord. We all will have situations in our life where trouble comes, but we should also all <coughs> expect something good from God. I don't know about you, but I, I want something good in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting something from God. Yeah. Every morning I wake up, I'm expecting something good from God. No matter what the world does to me, I'm expecting something good from God. No matter how folks treat me, I'm expecting something good from God. You may say, well, why would you expect something good from God every day? Because God died for my life. The Bible says that he was innocent, but they marched him up the cattle. He wasn't guilty, but he took on my sins. He was blameless, but he hung on the cross for me. The Bible also says there was a thief Next to him, he said, remember me when you come into the kingdom. And Jesus said, today, you will be with me in paradise. If God would bless that thief, if that thief could expect something good, then surely I can expect something good. If that thief could expect something good from God, then surely you can expect something good from God. And I want to encourage you, every day you have to expect something good from God in your life. Don't let your, don't let your mind convince you otherwise. Let's open the door to the church this day. There may be one here who wants to expect something good from God. Our invitation to him is him number 403. Simply says, what a wonderful change in my life has been Since Jesus came into my heart, I have liked my soul for as long as I saw. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Because of the joy of my soul, like the seed that was wrong, since Jesus came into my heart. Let us sing one verse of uh, our to him.
will feed your spirit, allow God to minister to you. Allow the Lord to remind you of Christ to have a spirit of expectation every day. Amen? Amen. 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 We have birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate this week. We have uh, Jerome Perry, June 27th. All right. Mr. Kayla Statham, June 27th. Uh, George Kaufman, June 28th. Chloe Corbis, July 1st. Robert Hardy, July 3rd. Amen. Let's pray to sing and have birthday. Thank you. 